All right, next problem. So we're going to read that question sentence first, regardless of if we have the heebie-jeebies towards decimals and multiple decimals in the same problem. That's not the problem. The problem is understanding context. All right, everybody. So here, our context is, what is the other cyclist's speed? So everybody, when we think about the word speed, what's another word that starts with an R that might help us contextualize this a little bit? Yeah, we're looking at the word rate. Yeah, the word speed and rate for the purpose of this question specifically, they're the same. Speed and rate are the same thing for this particular question. So that's what we want. We want the other cyclist speed because we see that the first cyclist is already given to us as 18.5 miles per hour. So we'll take that into consideration, okay? But bear with me here. First things first, we want to know the second cyclist, so C2, I want to know their rate. Perfect. Sounds good. Now let's just go ahead and write down the information, and I'll show you how quickly we can take care of this one. So two cyclists start from the same point at the same time, and they ride in opposite directions. Hit me, everybody. If we know that we have two objects starting from the same point, traveling for the same amount of time, and they're moving in opposite directions, again, specifically opposite directions, what do we know we can do with those rates and distances? We can add them. Absolutely. Because if we have one object going this way, we can take that distance with the other object going that way and its distance, and we get the total distance by adding. We get the total distance by adding. So because we know that, we can take advantage of that in this problem. And here's how. The first cyclist rate, we know as 18.5 miles per hour. Everybody, if we knew both of these rates together, if we knew both of these rates, what would we be doing with them in this context? If we knew both of those rates, we would be adding them, right? We would be adding them to get that total rate. However, everybody, answer me this. If I had that combined rate, what would I do with that 18.5 to get the missing rate? What would I do? If I worked backwards, what would I do? I would subtract, exactly. If I knew the total rate, I would subtract the 18.5 to get that first cyclist's rate. Keep that in mind. We're gonna come back to the idea in just a couple of moments. We're gonna come right back to that in a couple of moments. So here, we see that they are 77 miles apart after 2.2 hours. Just take that right there. I'm gonna highlight that in blue. 77 miles apart after 2.2 hours. Guess what I can find out right now? I can find that combined rate. Because look, the combined distance is 77 miles. The combined rate is what we would be calculating because we're multiplying by the time that they're traveling combined or together. And that's gonna be 2.2 hours. Everybody, What's the one operation I need to do right here to get that combined rate? What's the one thing I need to do? Yeah, just got to divide. I just got to divide. If I divide right here, I can get that combined rate. And once I get that combined rate, it is easy from here. I promise. Let's do it here. We just have to... Again, if you're not good with decimals, this might be, feel a little tricky, but just know that you gotta work on dividing by decimals if this part kind of scares you. And it's okay if it does, we can work on it always. So we're dividing there, cancels out. Now we're gonna divide 77 by 2.2. I'm gonna show you a quick little trick that I like to use to never divide by a decimal. And that's gonna be whatever you do to the bottom, you do to the top, and this is what it looks like. I'm gonna copy the 77 divided by 2.2, I'm gonna put this right over here. And I'm gonna show you what happens when I combine my knowledge. I'm going to move the decimal over to the right one time. That means I'll take this decimal, move it to the right one time. This becomes 770 divided by 22. 
That's what that allows me to do. Whatever you do to the bottom, you do to the top when it comes to fractions. And it makes it so that you don't have to divide by a decimal. I can just do the long division here. 22 going into 770. Help me out, everybody. How many times does 22 doesn't go into 7, but how many times does it go into 77? Yeah, it's going to go three times. So we'll see what that is. 3 times 22 is 66. Subtract them and we get 11. Drop that 0. We have 110. Everybody, how many times does 22 go into 110? Yeah, that'll be a clean exact 5 times. Exactly. 5 times 22, if you don't believe me, will be 110. Use a calculator to double check that if you need to. But that's a clean division. And that's 35. Guess what just happened, my party people? We just found that combined rate. It is 35 miles per hour. This is the combined rate right there. And think about it, everybody. We got here through this calculation, but what do we understand about this? We understand that the first rate plus the second rate gives us the combined rate in this situation. So if we wanted to work backwards, everybody, we would subtract. That's the point. If we knew what opposite directions meant in this situation, we know exactly what we can do in this case. 35 minus 18.5. Let's see what that gives us. Looks like I'm going to have to borrow a little bit. That's okay. I'm going to borrow 1 from the 5 to get 4 and make 10. 10 minus 5, that's going to give me 5. Follow that decimal up right there. Then we have 4 minus 8. Can't do that. So I'll borrow again, make this a 2 to make this a 14. 14 minus 8 is 6. And then 2 minus 1 is 1. And look at that. The rate for that second cyclist is 16.5 miles per hour after we work backwards and that makes the correct answer here answer choice a 16.5 miles per hour all right another question solve 6x equals 24. so let's pay attention here because remember when it comes to solving equations we're trying to work backwards we're trying to identify the op the order of operations going forward so we can figure out what to do backwards. So checking this out, 6x equals 24, everybody. What operation are we currently looking at? I'm taking a look at the 6x, and I, uh, well, I don't see anything between the 6 and the x. What operation is actually there if it's not explicitly written like that? Yeah, that's multiplication. Remember, if we have two terms attached to each other without an operation being shown, yeah, that's multiplication. And that's important to know because, again, this is read as 6 times x. It's very important to know because now we can work backwards. Everybody, the opposite of multiplication, that's division. And what are we dividing by on both sides? We're going to be dividing by 6, exactly. We're going to be dividing by 6 on both sides here. Booyah there and there. Cancels out on the left side. And then 24 divided by 6 is 4. And there we are. The correct answer to this practice question is going to be B, x equals 4. And there we are with that one.